Hey, tiny planet explorers. I'm Kick the PJ, and no, this thing on my head is not alive. Let's talk about games. I want you to dig deep into the gooey memories of your brain box and think, has this ever happened to me? Hey, uh, PJ. You've been playing that game for a little while now. Correct. Don't you have any, like, two-player games or something like that? No, they were all destroyed in the big wreck. In this situation, you could respond with something like, Oh, what if we played a board game or something? And before you lose your friend to what may possibly be their misconception of a board game, you'll pull something spectacular out that will totally bewilder and amaze them. Yeah. I've compiled a list of five essential tabletop games that I would recommend for any successful games night. Let's begin. Number one on my list is King of Tokyo. In King of Tokyo, each player controls a kaiju of destruction and battles to be the last behemoth standing, using an array of powerful buffs to become either the king or queen of Tokyo. The reason it's on my list is because this game is definitely simple enough to understand after one round, with just enough randomness to ensure that the advanced players don't steamroll the newbies. For example, I've played this game approximately 20 times and have won about three of those games. So yeah, don't mess with me. <laughs> it's entertaining, it's ridiculous, and up to six people can don a monster and duke it out in Japan. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, then might be a good option. Number two is Hanabi. This is a co-op game where you and your friends take on the roles of pyrotechnicians and attempt to put on the best damn firework display known to mankind. Which may not sound as impressive as giant monsters punching each other in the face, but hear me out. As this is a team game, your incentive is to get as high a score as possible. I play this game a lot with Sophie, Felix, and Marcia, and so far our high score is a 23 out of a possible 25. And believe me, this game will kick your ass. It is super addictive because you know if you can just get that maximum score, you will be the best pyrotechnician that ever lived. And that is all I want in life. It's all I want. Nothing more, nothing less. Number three is Camelot. This game is ridiculous. I bought it blind because the box art made me laugh. Just look at how angry that Camel is. And this one as well. This one doesn't know what's happening. Camelot is a gambling game where you're betting on racing camels that stack up on top of each other. Again, I would describe this game as super light and casual, very easy for grandma to pick up on Christmas day. Although I think grandma's got her eye on King of Tokyo, if you know what I mean. This game actually has elements of strategy and a bit less randomness than King of Tokyo. But with that said, if you do come dead last, it's not like you're gonna be flipping any tables because dude, it's camels. It's, it's just it's a game about camels. What the camels ever do to you? Take it easy, right? It's just camels. Number four is Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a tile placing world building game. Definitely one of the more relaxing games. You won't be getting any giant lizard monsters smashing up your castles in Carcassonne. Although King of Carcassonne, I like the sound of that. It's got a nice ring to it. It's got potential. The cool thing about this board game is that you build the board as you play. And it's different every single time, so it gives you really good replay value. Also to mention, it has like a million expansion packs in case the standard edition doesn't do it for you. I really like that you can play this game as cutthroat as you want. If everyone in your group just wants to farm some fields, construct some castles, that kind of thing, then you can totally do that. But if you're the Fort Siege ransacking land kind of player, then you can totally do that too. It's got a little something for everyone. And finally, number five is Fable Fights. Wait, hold on. No, wait, this is, uh, this is my game available in my online store. Wait, how did this even get here? I don't even know what happened there. Oh, get away. All right, very funny, everybody. I want to show a hands. Who, who put this one in the list, all right? Light stand, was it you? No, not that, not that. Although if you did want to add that to your collection, I wouldn't stop you. Let's just get rid of it, okay? Let's just put it over there. Number five for reals is Gloom. The reason I've put Gloom on my list is because it's unlike any other of my recommendations. It not only has a dark storytelling element to it, which may please some of the more creative players, but your overall score is determined and shown through these translucent cards. I've never seen a game with a mechanic like this before. Not only that, but it is wonderfully, beautifully disturbing. The aim of the game is to make your family as miserable as is humanly possible, eventually killing them in your story in hilarious and dramatic ways when they're at their lowest. It may sound sadistic, but I think it's very telling about the friends that you're playing with. When Professor Helena Sloger is devoured alive by a giant man-eating frog whilst her house around her is burning down to the ground. Well, let's just say that it's, uh, it's good to know which of your friends are capable of devising such things. And so, 
That is my five recommendations. Of course, there is a ton of other games that I enjoy and plenty of games that I still want to play, but there's five classic games to get you started, which are all very simple to learn and incredibly varied in playstyle and theme. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe I'll do some more recommendation videos. How about that, huh? Until then, go punch some giant monsters in their stupid faces, put some dollar down on some lumpy llamas, and become a legendary agriculturalist. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.